Hi, this is Grouper Training for Developers and Architects, Web Services Part 2. I'm Chris Heiser from Internet2 and University of Pennsylvania. We'll introduce Web Services again and we're going to talk about common features in the web service operations. Result code, metadata, sorting and paging, how to act as another user, looking up various objects, uh, transaction types for batched requests, um, whether or not you want to include detail on the return data, subject attribute names that you would like to request, WS params, and timestamps and booleans. So again, web services um, use the grouper API to talk to the grouper registry, and then various clients and connectors will talk to the web services remotely <coughs> over the web service API. So the result code is um, returned in the HTTP header and in the body of the request. That's because in an exception there might not be a valid B. So you can always get the result code from the HTTP header. And the, the result code is an enum, a Java enum, which you can get from Subversion Javadoc linked from the documentation. You can get to the Grouper Web Services documentation easily from Google. And then each um, operation has its own wiki page. So if we look at Add Member, this is going to have a link to Subversion for the um, response codes. And basically, um, there's an overall response code which is going to be in the um, HTTP header and some of them are successful and some of them aren't and then there's going to be a response code um, if it's a batched operation um, for each um, item in that batch so we'll know if the subject already if the assignment already existed etc if you look at the samples, you can see that um, that's the request. There's an HTTP header, X grouper result code, success, and then this is a true or false, which interprets that result code. There could be multiple success result codes. And then inside each of the batched results, it'll say success already existed so that was already a member and this one also already existed inside the body of the response you can get more metadata uh, for instance um, the result code, code we already talked about whether or not it's a success true or false the result message which is just a summary of what happened the elapsed server time so that you can diagnose performance problems and take out the network latency and just see how much time it um, it was computing on the server. Um, warnings, which aren't used that often, but um, you could log those to see if there is a potential issue. And then metadata on each assignment in the batch. So this is the overall result metadata result code success, T for success, and then the result message success for client version this. We did these lookups and these are the params that were passed in. And then the metadata on each of the response in a batch just has the result code and whether or not it's a success. Certain operations support sorting and paging, for instance, find groups. You can pass in the page number, which is one indexed. So page one is a one, not a zero page size, sort string, which is a column to sort on, which is specific for each operation, and whether or not it's ascending or descending. So, if we look at find groups, in this case I'm looking at find groups light. Um, I'm not sure why find groups doesn't have it. But anyway, you see ascending, um, true, false, or null, um, uh, the page number, which is one indexed, 
um, page size, and then the sort string. All operations support act as. Um, you pass in a subject that you want to act as instead of the authenticating user of the web. An example of why you'd want to do this is to build a grouper UI. Um, your grouper administrator has to authorize your authenticating user to be able to act as other users. And you can restrict who the authenticating user to the web service is allowed to act as. So for instance, you could say they're allowed to act as students in your institution or faculty, but not as a grouper sysadmin. Many structures in Grouper can be referred to in multiple ways. For instance, a group can be looked up as a UUID or a name, and a subject um, you can look up as a subject ID or a subject identifier, and optionally pass in a source ID. So let's look at add member SOAP for an example of this. So in this case, I'm looking up the group by name. You could have also passed in group UUID. And for the subject lookups, the first one, I'm going to pass in a source ID. Since I know the source, that'll speed things up a little bit to find the subject. And the subject ID. And the second one, maybe I don't know the source, and I'm passing in the subject identifier. And so these lookups, I need to pass in one group lookup and at least one subject lookup. Um, and I can do that in, in various ways. Many batched operations support transactions, um, so you need to be able to pass in the transaction type that you want for that batch of operations. So if you don't pass in a transaction type, it defaults to none, so that basically as much of the batch will succeed as, as it can. Um, so you can either set the TX type parameter to none, or read write new. Um, there are other values in the grouper transaction type enum Java class that don't really make sense so these are the only two that you would want to pass to a web service operation and if none like I said then the operation will try to do as many of the sub requests as it can and commit as much as it can but if it's read write new then any failure of any of the batch of operations will roll the entire request back so for include detail, by default the web service only returns a minimal amount of information for things like groups or subjects. But in your request, um, you can request more information about, um, for instance, groups or sex. So for groups, this means you can get information about legacy types and attributes, not the new attribute framework. Um, details about if it's a composite, etc. And for subjects, um, if you say you want subject details, whatever your uh, grouper administrator configured in the grouper ws.properties to be returned for subject detail will be returned. And you do this with the switches include group detail, tf, include subject detail, tf. Subject attribute names. Subjects might have attributes configured in the subject API in grouper institution which are not configured to be returned by default or in the subject details. So if the web service caller is allowed to access those attributes, they can pass um, whatever attributes they want in the request and the server will return them. So for instance, maybe email address and preferred first name are not returned by default or in the subject detail. So for XML REST, you can do this in any of the formats, but this is an example of XML REST. You could pass in subject attribute names, which is an array of strings, and then pass in the names that are configured in your grouper server to be returned, and every subject that's associated with that call will um, return those attributes for you. All operations, light and batched, take in a WS params input, which is a map of name value pairs. Um, it's intended for one-off 
um, switches for the operations to put options that weren't originally thought of, but then we added later. Um, so those structures are in the WSDL or the spec to maintain backwards compatibility. However, they're not used all that frequently because we can just add new input params without affecting backwards compatibility. Um, and if they are used, then it's documented in each of the operations docs. So um, since the web services only take in strings, arrays, types, and arrays of types, um, we're not using SOAP-specific formats for Booleans or timestamps, for example. So these things are represented as strings, and timestamps have two formats, and we could add more. Um, the year slash month slash day space, uh, 24 hours, 0 to 23 minutes, seconds, and milliseconds, or the same thing with an underscore to make it easier for um, command line clients to uh, pass those in. And um, Booleans can have uh, many values, um, T or F, true or false, yes or no, Y or N, and those are not case sensitive. So you can pass in pretty much whatever you want. Click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. And thank you very much. For further information, you can look at the wiki, mailing lists, demo server, etc.